The day is great. And this is block eight. If you're ready to get started, I won't make you wait. That is right, we are doing block number eight. It's been super fun having you along for all of the last blocks on our sew along here. Oh, and by the way, my name is Rob Appel. I am with Michael Miller Fabrics. Welcome to Making It Fun. If it's your first video with us, we are so glad you are here. And yes, for the last, well, eight months now, we have been doing our fantastic Peek Into Batik. It's our Michael Miller Fabrics sew along using our fantastic batiks in the jet black fabric that we obviously love over at Michael Miller. Now the pattern are free. They're on our blog, which is also called Making It Fun. I'll have a link at the bottom of today's video so you can just follow that if you like. The printable PDF instructions come in two formats. You can either do what we're going to do today, which is pieced uh, instructions, or if you're using the AccuQuilt system, you can also download the instructions for that and follow along. If you didn't see the Block 2 video, you got to check it out. My good friend Mel Beach, one of the brand ambassadors for Michael Miller Fabrics, uh, she invited me to her home to use her AccuCut, uh, or AccuQuilt cutting system, excuse me, and we had a blast. And the blocks are on the wall and they all match up regardless if you start and or finish piecing AccuQuilting however you want to do. So anyways, it's a fantastic, fantastic block of the month so along. I'm super stoked you are here to follow along with me. And as always, I'm using the Michael Miller Basics fabrics. I want you to be able to find these in all of your local quilt shops, so please don't forget to ask. So in today's block, like all the rest, we are going to be using the hash dot from Michael Miller. I have the turquoise color, the meadow, the mustard, and then on the borders I'm using the whirlpool color of the um, Michael Miller fabrics. What is this thing called? It is called marble. Sorry, I was just <laughs> deer in the headlights was drawing a blank there of course. And then we'll use the jet black and obviously this marble on the borders like I was saying. Now please print out your instructions. I'll just give you a moment for that. That's probably long enough, fantastic. Okay, so now you have your instructions in front of you and uh, you're gonna get your pieces prepped out to follow the instructions. And if you're doing that, the math or the piece cutting is super easy today. Oh, it's always easy, I shouldn't have said it that way. So your squares are gonna be two and a half by two and a half. The rectangles are two and a half by four and a half. And you're gonna need 12 of this turquoise color. You're going to need um, two here, two here, four and four as we go along of the rectangle so that we have all the pieces we need to make the center unit. Now let me slide these just slightly out of our way so I can show you where we're heading. We're going to make the center blocks and we're gonna need a couple that are a little different. So we're gonna make two of each of these today. And if you can see the base construction is all really, really simple. It's basically this rectangle with the parallel lines th running through it. So in order to do that, what I did first is I took and I marked all of my turquoise little squares there with a diagonal line running from edge to edge, and that's going to be our sewing line today. So the easiest way to do this is just put a ruler down, and I'm leaving just a little space from on the corners there as my marker, my little fine tip. Sharpie there, it's getting a little wore out, but hopefully you can see we've got a very nice line there. And again, that's gonna end up in the selvage or the, the fall off, the cut off, the sew away, so we don't worry about marking onto the fabric and having it show up there. So that's not a problem. So I actually put this diagonal on all of the squares we needed, including the green ones and the black ones. For the black one, the Sharpie didn't show up so well, so I used my chalk pencil instead. I hope you find some humor in that. Okay, so now all of the prep work is done, and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start here with our fantastic green rectangle. We're going to need to make four of these, and we're going to start by laying our... Um, square that we just put the line on and I'm going to be running straight through and I'm just checking my work to make sure that these lines are running exactly as you see them in the pattern because again it is a sewing line. We're going to go right over to our sewing machine here and I'm going to do a seam allowance. The edge guide today doesn't really matter because I'm actually looking at the needle through or excuse me the line through the hole in the foot there as I stitch right on this sewing line. Construction doesn't take long because they're short little pieces, but what I want you to do now is I want you to come in here and I want you to trim off using a quarter inch. And that's just using the ruler also protects my hands, but 
these little pieces, you can save them if you're into itty bitty quilts. I'm not gonna save these. Later on, we'll save some triangles for you that like to save your parts and pieces. Let's go ahead now and we're gonna press this over. So basically I'm pressing into the blue today, pressing into the square over onto the rectangle. It just makes life easier, okay? The next piece we're gonna do, again, we're building this unit one more time because like I said, we need four of these. I'm gonna make sure that as I lay these fabrics right sides together, that these two lines are now running parallel to each other. So that gives us exactly what we need when we're done. So with the green rectangles, we're putting two blue squares on four rectangles. And we're stitching on the drawn line. I called it a sewing line a moment ago, but it's a drawn line and now it becomes a stitch line. Okay, we're gonna trim this one as well. And we're gonna press it over also. Still pressing away from that center, so pressing back into the blue. And now we have our last unit there. It matches, it rotates, it still matches. I'm a happy camper. So now we're gonna to need to do that on both of our gold rectangles as well, our mustard color hash dot, of course. And we want the turquoise sides or the blue sides to be running exactly like they are here. So now what I'm doing, just to make my life super easy, is I'm going to go ahead and lay this here and I'm making sure that these lines are now running parallel. And I'm just gonna do the same here. Now the gold rectangles are gonna feature one of each of the green and of the black. <laughs> no extra threads necessary. <laughs> the green and the black when we get there. So this is why I'm doing it this way. It stays very systematic. And if you wanted to be chain piecing these, you could this way. So just keep in mind, we want our turquoise pieces to go on just like they did in the first two units. And that will make sure that everything lines up as necessary. And because they are prepped out, and I did mention it, chain piecing, I'm just gonna leave my needle down. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this next unit that was already prepped out. I'm just kinda lifting my presser foot lightly there. And then as I touch the gas on this new Juki, it just lowered the foot for me. And I'm just still sewing right on that line. And at the end of all of the work I need to do, that's when I'll cut my threads. And I actually like to just use the little uh, thread cutter on the machine itself to be separating out my um, units or my blocks as I'm working. Let's get these trimmed off real quick. And we're gonna press these also. So now that we've started our prep work on the gold bases, uh, as I was starting to say earlier, we're gonna need to make two each. Two with the green, consuming up the two green squares we used, and two with the black, using up the two black squares we used. Please just make note that everything is still running parallel to the work we've been doing, and let's go ahead and just chain piece these last two units together as well. Again, just cutting them on the machine. Oop, I almost got ahead of myself. Remember to trim before you press because we're just cutting away the scrap or the fall off here as we go. So I'm just using that quarter inch right on the threads and then just trimming those off ever so nicely. We're gonna press these also. And that's all the prep work necessary for the base units to start building out our blocks like you see here. Now, 
like I said, or maybe I'm going to say it now for the first time, every block is going to feature one of these blue-green combos, and they're all going to be running in the same direction. So now with one of them like this, I'm going to bring in the black. Notice the orientation of my colors, please. And then same with on the green. And if it's easiest to say it, on the left side of all of my patches or my squares, I'm finding the turquoise lining up there with those two triangles. Maybe that helps you see it better. So I'm just gonna fold these over now right sides together. And I'm gonna make sure I get the correct seam going through the machine. And same thing, we can sell both of these at the same time because one won't affect the other. So as these two units come out of the machine, we're just gonna press these and I don't know if there's any instructions or direction I can give to which way to press. So I'm just closing my eyes and pressing at this point. <laughs> and then when we bring these back onto the table is where the magic happens. As you can probably see right here, we're gonna form a really cool black and green pinwheel. And so um, let me just make sure I'm doing it as the instructions are doing it. So I've got a green pinwheel, black, or I should say green triangle, black triangle, green triangle, black triangle as it goes in just like that. Isn't that cool how it kind of forms that really cool whirly giggy looking design as well. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, combine these two sides. And while that's still over at the machine, we're, I guess we're doing a, a secondary theme of chain piecing today. We're gonna go ahead and get this seam allowance put together as well. Very fun construction today. Once these two units are pressed open, and for this one, let's just press into the green because that's where I've started because the center seams will make a difference, make it easier to nest those seams together. So right now I pressed from the black into the green because that's the way I started doing it when I was talking. So on this same one, we're gonna press from the green into the black. And that will give me the opportunity here to line these seams up. And when I say nest, what I'm trying to describe is how the seams are going in opposite directions to make life so easy there. Okay, let's get this put together. Now, center's all done. Ooh, that looks pretty good too. Now, one of the coolest things about this whole block of the month program is all of the outsides, as you can see over here on the design wall, are the same borders to form this really cool star. So now that we've got our center made like that, we're gonna border it out with the same exact units. And those, we're gonna need to make two different kind of setups, but they all start again at the same center or starting point. So we're gonna make two that look like this, and we're gonna make two that look just like this. And what we started with, if this is your first time to do one of the block of the month videos, is we've got our jet black, and this is an eight and a half by four and a half inch rectangle, and then our squares are all gonna be four and a half inches as well. You will need four of these, 
you will need four of the black at four and a half inches. And then you're gonna need eight of our marble fabric, or if you're using the batiks, your border prints for your batiks, of course, you're gonna need eight of these at four and a half. And like earlier, I've already drawn on the diagonal lines so that I can just lay these fabrics right sides together. And now we're gonna go over here, and on this particular portion of the project, this is still a sew in line. So sometimes you see us sew on the line, Sometimes that line is a quarter inch marker so we can get two different half square triangles out of the same kind of construction. But for this setup, we're just using it as a sewing line. And at this point, this is very crucial to make the next parts come together much easier. I do want you to use a good quarter inch seam allowance here. I want you to trim this off first and do set these aside. These can be put together and uh, pressed and trimmed back down to a three and a half inch um, half square triangle. And I even have some other videos where I was playing with how I use my cell phone to shoot different demo videos. So I love having piles and piles of the same size units around so I can demo and play with different blocks as we go. Okay, what I'm really trying to point out here in this construction though, is I wanted to press this over and I pressed it again into the blue, not the black, so that when I lay this unit on, this blue square with the diagonal line, the diagonal line, it's forming a V and it's crossing over this already. That makes life so much easier. We're gonna stitch this on. And we're just gonna trim this right back off. Save those like I said. Boy, it's getting messy around here. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and press this real quick. And if you've been paying attention, or if you're like me, this isn't your first rodeo or your first quilt, then you'll know that actually what we really did is we made four of these units, right? And then I took two of them and I'm just gonna add what we call the cornerstones. So these black fabrics are gonna go right on here, right sides together. We're gonna stitch them on right now. And both of the cornerstones are on. Now as I go to the ironing surface, I'm going to actually press into the cornerstone or away from the rectangle into the square. And I want you to pay attention because we'll be able to nest our seams again here in a few moments when we actually put these units on to the block or the center. And that's exactly what we're going to do now. So I do need to start with my shorter of the two units and they do form a star. So let's go ahead and make sure we're just taking a moment and laying these out correctly as they go in. They're going to basically go in just like this. Super nice and easy. So let's just take the short units and match up those center points down here just so that you're nice and centered as you get into that sewing machine and you're gonna begin quarter inch seam allowance, quilting as usual. And with the two short borders on to the block, what I want you to do now is press from the border into the block. Because remember a moment ago when we were putting those cornerstones on, we were actually pressing into the border, not into the block, if you're thinking of it, that cornerstone that way. So now what I'm doing on both sides, again, pressing from the border into the work or into the center unit block. Sometimes it takes a little bit of pressure too. <laughs> because I really want those seam allowances working for me. So they're folded in now, and the other seam allowances were folded out, so I'm just gonna be able to grab one of these just like this, match up the corners to start, and we are in the home stretch here.
And there we have it, kids. We have the borders on. Let's get it quickly pressed over so you can see how fantastic this is gonna look. I'm very, very proud of the work again today. And I've really been enjoying this block of the month, this sew along with the quilt. I should call it the peak in the boutique. That's what it really is. There's our block eight looking terrific. Another one in the can, ladies and gentlemen, because I know you guys are out there sewing along with us here as well. So again, link to the free pattern is right below in the description. You can find it over on our blog that is called Making It Fun. I am so glad you are watching the video here at the YouTube channel called Making It Fun because we at Michael Miller Fabrics believe if it ain't fun, it ain't worth doing. We'll see you all next week. Thanks again for being here. What, are you actually still here? That's fantastic. Make sure you check out some more of my other fabulous content right here on YouTube. I think it's terrific. Please subscribe while you're there and make sure you hit that little notification bell so you don't miss another moment of the fun.